Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, November or November, April 29th. April 29th. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guest today is Desiree Alexander, and her topic is not your grandmother's video. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Paula who will now introduce Desiree as well as ask her the newbie question. Well, good morning everyone at Classroom 2.0 Live. It is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Desiree Alexander, EBS, who is an award-winning multi-degree educator who has been in the educational field for 15 years. She is currently the Instructional Technology Supervisor for Cato Parish Public Schools in Louisiana. She is the founder of Educator Alexander, an educational consulting business. She consults with members of several schools and businesses and presents at conferences nationwide. She holds various certifications, as well as multiple technology certifications, including but not limited to IC3, IC3 certification, Google Certified Trainer, Google Innovator, Apple Teacher 2016, and a Microsoft Certified Educator. She has been uh, recently named the 2017 PBS Digital Media Innovator of the Year for the State of Louisiana. She is a 2016 A Plus Pell Member of the Year, the 2015 Librarian of the Year for Louisiana Libraries. Librarian Association, the 2014 Leader of the Year for Region 2 for our state group, LeQ, and a Campus 2015 Teacher of the Year in the Zachary Community School District. She is also the Director of Area 7 for the LeQ Board of Directors. The Louisiana Association of Computer Using Educators, LeQ, is where I first had the pleasure of meeting Desiree. Um, in person as we both became members of the board, of the LeQ board, at their annual retreat. It was there that we decided to work on a project of hosting monthly webinars and creating instructional videos for our LeQ members. We get to see each other often as we, prevent, as we present at various conferences around the country and here in Louisiana. I'm always amazed at Desiree's energy and enthusiasm for sharing with others. It's a great honor to introduce my friend and co-board member, Desiree Alexander, as our special guest today. And our newbie question is, uh-oh, I forgot the newbie question. Hold on one second. Um, let's, here it is. OK. Do you? Or why is using videos in the classroom important? So Desiree, I'm turning it over to you. And good morning and welcome. Thank you so much, Paula. That was awesome. I appreciate it, my friend. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here again. And for the, and hopefully you can hear me and I'm coming through loud and clear, hopefully not too loud, just let me know. Um, but for the newbie question, why is using video so important in the classroom? I personally feel like they, it is so important to use videos because it helps our learning. Anything that helps our students grasp a hold of a concept, we want to use. So in my experience in the classroom, using videos kind of help drive whatever I was teaching, help drive it home for the students. Our students, most of our students are so visual, especially nowadays with all of the technology, all of the screen time that they constantly have, it helps drive home any point that you are trying to make. And I also like to tell teachers, you know, since you, as the teacher in that classroom, really don't know anything, Sometimes having another person say the exact same thing that you just said helps drive it home for your students because you know you don't know anything. Uh, so having somebody on the screen say the exact same thing that you just said for a week helps drive it home, then that's fine with me. So that's why it's so important to use videos in the classroom, in my opinion. 
So as far as I know, and please stop me if I'm wrong, we are just going to go ahead and roll through and I'm going to share my screen for um, showing you how to use videos in today's world. These are not your grandmother's videos and I don't care how old you are, I don't care if you are a grandmother, these are still not your grandmother's videos. So these are not the same videos that we used to watch on either microfilm or VHS or you know these are not those same videos. You want to get some new content, some new videos and meet our students where they are. Also, oh goodness, yes, no, 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 we're not using those anymore. Um, and I'm the film strips, yes, with the, you know, the screen going in and out while you're watching it. We're not doing that anymore. So what we want to do is see where can we find some fresh new videos, how can we meet our students where they are, and how can we actually use videos and help our students create videos and create those um, those instructional tools and actually show us that they know the content in a fun new way. So I am Desiree Alexander, aka Educator Alexander, and all of the information that I'm sharing with you can be found on my website at www.educatoralexander.com. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If for some reason the screen sharing either does not work or creates a problem, then I'll just come back and just show you the tools and talk through each one. So I'm going to try to share my screen at this time. And if I don't hit cancel, that'd be awesome. Okay, so again, we're talking about not your grandmother's videos. I'm going to show you exactly where to go to find all of the information. You should be seeing my screen at this time, so please let me know if something is not working. Um, you will go to educatoralexander.com, presentations, tech tools, and not your grandmother's videos. And this is actually in, uh, this is the link that is in the live binder, so you don't have to worry about remembering that. But just to let you know, just in case you just go to my regular website, presentations, tech tools, not your grandmother's videos. Okay, so this is where we are, not your grandmother's videos. We're going to go through a lot of tools today. And um, you don't have to worry about, you know, knowing what the link is or what, what did she say? It's all here on my website. You just click on the picture and you go to all the tools. So you never have to worry about that. Also, at the end, I'm going to give you my email address. I always say I give my email address out for you to use it. So if you ever have a question, email me. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can use YouTube videos in your district or not. I'm hearing some moaning. I'm hearing some, no, we can't. And I'm hearing those lucky people that are like, yeah, sure, duh. So if you can use it, I'm still going to show you a tool that will help you use videos in your um, YouTube videos in your classroom. If you can't use it, the second tool is going to be a lifesaver. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is called ViewPeer. If you go to ViewPeer, and there's other ones out here that kind of do the same thing, of course, it's technology. Once one person brings it out, everybody brings it out. So what you do with ViewPeer is if you have the YouTube URL already, you can just copy and paste it right here, or you can search directly here in ViewPeer. So if I search for, let's say, basketball, And I just hit enter, or I can hit purify, either one. It's going to bring up all of the YouTube videos that are on YouTube. So I don't have to worry about that. So if I click on a video, what this does, which is a yay, is if you notice all of the, excuse my language, crap, is gone from the video. You don't have advertisements. So you don't have all the little suggested videos. You don't have comments. And you know how some of those things can get a little, a little racy while you're in the classroom and then you see something you're like, oh, no, 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 no. And you have to run 
to the laptop to turn it off, you don't have to worry about that with ViewPure. So it plays the video. You see it's a nice big screen. It plays a little bit bigger than a usual YouTube video, but you don't have all the other stuff. You don't have the pop-ups. You don't have all that stuff. You just have, sorry, I just clicked on it. Um, you just have the video itself. So that is ViewPure. And if you see me clicking on a video, um, we won't be able to see it. I, I, it's really strictly out of habit. But if you want any examples of these, if you actually just go to the link itself, there's plenty of examples for you. The second one is KeepVid. With KeepVid, you actually have to have the URL for the video. So if I go to, for example, my YouTube channel and I click on a video to get the URL, so now I can come back here, paste the URL, and this is the only download button that is correct. Sometimes you see how it says advertisement, it has this big whatever. Sometimes they'll have a big download button right here. And if you click it, you know, who knows what you're downloading. So if you're going to show this tool to someone else, make sure that they know that this is the only download button that you should be clicking. When you click it, what KeepVid allows you to do is download YouTube videos, any of them on YouTube. It's a couple of reasons why you would want to download your YouTube videos. One, if YouTube is blocked, on your campus, you can do this at home, download your YouTube video, and you have it forever and ever. And you can play it without being on the internet. So you can put it in a Google Drive folder, you can put it on your desktop, wherever you want to put it, and you can keep it forever and ever. Another reason why you want to download your YouTube videos is even if you are allowed to have YouTube videos, um, you know that they can be taken down at any time. Just like I have a YouTube channel, if I want to just completely delete my YouTube channel, those videos are gone. So if you have that video and you're like, I love this video, keep it, download it, and you have it forever and ever, and it's yours. You no longer need the internet or anything like that to play it. So you would just come right here, you would click right here, and it will start downloading your video for you. If you're using Chrome, you know it will download right here, and wherever you told your regular downloads to go, like a download folder or your desktop, that's what it will appear, and you'll have it forever and ever. And it plays using whatever video player you use on your regular computer, like Windows Movie Player or um, QuickTime or whatever you use, it just plays with that. So that is Keep Big. Keep Big has been a life changer for so many people. The next one is Flocabulary. I absolutely love Flocabulary. What it does, and if you're like, yes, then, then you know the awesomeness of Flocabulary. What it is is it explores different content in hip-hop videos. They're all very, very appropriate. And these are the subjects that it um, goes by. So it's language, arts, math, science, social studies, life skills, which is a new one, which is awesome, vocabulary, and current events. I know a lot of people in different content areas that even if, you know, they don't want to use any of the content, they'll use the current event ones. It comes out every, at the end of every week, and they use it, you know, to keep their, their kiddos um, involved in what's really happening in the world, but in a safe way. So you have your current event ones. You can always try, um, usually I show the point of view one. It's a, it's a nice little funny hip hop video about um, learning the point of view in English. You can try any of these for free. After you try a couple of free ones, you do have to sign in and create an account to get more free ones. And then beyond the free ones, it is a paid service. So I'm going to come here and show you some of the different activities that you actually get with each one of the videos. Now, again, it is a paid service. After you, know, after you, after you run through all the free ones, you have to pay for the rest of them. But a nice hint is there, um, there's a lot of vocabulary videos on YouTube. And guess what? 
you just learned how to download a YouTube video. So you can get a whole bunch of vocabulary ones from YouTube, download them, and you can have a vocabulary nice little folder. With the video, you get a quick review. Now, some of these are paid, but I'll, I'll show you which ones are. The quick review is something you can put up on your, um, on your projector and just kind of ask them the questions. You have the lyric notes, so if you're like, I have no clue what they just said, that's okay. You have the lyrics. It tells you everything that they're saying. Respond, read and respond is paid. Fill in the blank is a way, a little quiz that you can give to your students. You have printable activities with it. So it gives you nice little activities that you can use. The online quiz is paid. The Lyric Lab is paid. Handouts gives you a lot of the activities in a nice little easy to print handout. So you see you have a quiz, you have the lyric notes, you have the lyrics, you have the fill in the blank, and then you have some of the exercises and activities. Isn't this awesome? It's all for free. You have lesson plans, and you have your teacher guide. So it tells you what standards each video, well, Common Core, but it tells you what standards each video is, um, it are, is using. So how awesome is this? So if someone comes in your room and says, you know, well, why are you watching videos? What's the point? You have all of the information for each video right here. You have lessons with it right here. So vocabulary is just simply amazing. I love vocabulary. Now, I can't see the chat box anymore. So if you are, okay, there it is. Um, the copyright. If you have any questions or anything, definitely let me know. I'll try to um, keep up in the chat box as much as I can. Um, yes, I know. A lot of people just know the hip hop videos and they're like, awesome. But there's so much more to vocabulary. Okay. Crash Course is a YouTube channel. So, of course, if you want to use some of their videos and YouTube is blocked, you would have to, you would have to um, download them. But what Crash Course is really fun with is they take certain, um, I'm going to go to the playlist. You can see the different content in a, a, quick, a quick view. So they take content, and again, if you remember at the beginning I said, you know, since you don't know anything in your classroom, sometimes someone else saying the exact same thing that you just said kind of sinks in your students' minds. That's what Crash Course is really good for because they take um, subjects like economics and makes it a little bit more fun. And they have, you know, little things popping up on the screen. They have um, animations. You know, it's very kind of quick, which is what our students, you know, are used to for some content. So you can see the content that they have. Usually I click on one and show you a little, uh, quick, a little quick example. But if you just come here, you can see you can click on any of them and see them. Um, but they really are cute. I've ha I have had someone tell me, you know, you want to, of course, with any video that you do, watch it ahead of time and just make sure. Because there may be, you know, a little humor that, um, not inappropriate, but it may be something that's a little liberal or something like that that you may want to see just in case. You don't want to you know, offend anybody. But um, this is Crash Course. This is a, a complete... YouTube channel that you can get a whole bunch of support for what you're already teaching in the classroom. I know most of you probably know Go Moodle. If you don't, what it is is a way to actually get your students, you see they're, they're all up and moving around, get your students active while they're learning. Now, Go Noodle has a free component. You do actually have to sign up for an account, but they have a free component and they have a paid component. I'm sure you can find some Go Noodle videos also on YouTube. So what it does is it's all about brain science. And I know we've heard brain science a lot these days. So it's all about brain science, and there's just like with vocabulary, there's um, reasoning behind you playing these videos. I always like to have a reason behind it. So if somebody would come in your classroom, you know, you can say, well, I'm using this for this. But Go Noodle, it helps you, and you can come up here and play one of these um, when you go and look at these yourself. But 
it gets you up, it gets you active while you're learning. Like one of these by the um these guys, I like that it shows you syllables. So, you know, you're clapping the syllables out and you're doing a little dance while you're learning how to see how many syllables is in a word. They also have some with a specific purpose, like if um, it's raining outside and you have to do recess inside, you come and find an indoor, uh, indoor recess video and you can play that for your students. And they can, I mean, students love it. And when Go Noodle first came out, it was kind of um, advertised or, you know, word of mouth as something for little kids. Like, oh, you know, your elementary students are going to love it. I am here to tell you. Middle school students love it. High school students love it. I use it in professional development when, with adults. Now, you know, some of them don't like getting up, but some of them do. <laughs> some of them love it. But you can use this, honestly, with any grade level. They love just the, just the brain break of getting up and getting active. So that is Go Noodle. After Powtoon, I'll check my chat box and see if I have any questions. Powtoon is a way, we've kind of gone through places where you can find and what you can do with videos. Now we're going to a couple of video creators. Then this is where you can go to actually create the videos, you and your students. So for Powtoon, Powtoon, you do have to sign up for an account. And I am already signed in. You sign in for an account. There um, are a lot of free resources, but there also are paid resources. I like to show you stuff that you can at least get something for free. Now, I teach a whole class on Powtoon, and what I've seen over like the past, I'm going to say, three to four years, is that more and more things are starting to become a paid part of Powtoon. So I really do think that in the next, I'm going to say maybe the next three to five years, I really do think Powtoon is going to become a pay-only service. But for now, there's a lot of things on here that we can do for free. So what Powtoon is is a way for you to, to create animated videos. So you see the little guy up here, he's a little animation. You can pick what animation you want to use and use it in Powtoon. This is a popping that I created. It kind of looks like a, um, a video game, and you can there, you can't see this example on your own. But if you just go to YouTube and search Powtoon examples, you'll see them. Um, they're everywhere. Uh, so many people use Powtoon these days that Powtoon is pretty much everywhere. Just remember when you are doing the link, of course, you can just come to my website and click on the picture, but it's no S. A lot of people like to put Powtoons because we're used to, you know, tunes with an S. So there's no S on Powtoon. So you would just keep leave the S off and then you will be good to go. But you come here, they have templates on here. You can do it all yourself. Um, from scratch, but there's templates on here that, guys, once you learn how to use Powtoon, you can do a Powtoon in five minutes. It's really amazing once you just learn how to use it. So that is Powtoon. I've had people that said, you know, well, I tried to do it myself, and you know, I just didn't get it. And I do understand that. It, it's, it's a small, very, very small learning curve, but once you learn how to do it, it's super, super easy. So that's Powtoon, and you can have your students create their own Powtoon account and actually create their Powtoons to give you information. So let me see if I have any questions. Create a separate email just for video upload. Yes, Desiree. Oh, no problem. I, I did see one question. It might have been answered in yes. the chat, but since you're pausing for questions, I can ask it. Uh, are these tools okay with copyright? Yes, these tools are are supposed to be used for educational purposes. So absolutely, okay. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, all of these, everything that I'm showing you is created for you to use it for these purposes. So yes, copyright is fine on all of them. So next, um, if there's any questions, please type them in. Or again, if you're like, oh, I don't want to ask in front of everybody, email me. I'm going to give you my email address. Did a father. I love Oh, go ahead. There is, a, there is another question that came in. Yes. 
Is it legal to download YouTube videos then in their entirety for educational purposes? I guess is the caveat. Uh, in, in in the Google terms of service, there were people typing that you're not really supposed to download YouTube videos. I don't. I don't want to answer that and answer it incorrectly. Okay. Um. I don't think it is. Let me put it like this. <laughs> um, I don't think it is a Google approved thing or Google would offer it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. Okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Okay. So Those are the ones that I found so far. Okay. Any questions, guys? Again, just chat, uh, type them in the chat box, or you can email me, and I'll be happy, happy, happy to answer it. And I'm always going to be honest with you, whatever, whatever the answer is. It is. So I'll always be honest with you. Devolver is another video creator. I love Devolver because it's so easy. There is no signing. in. You just click make a movie. I'm not sure if it's going to uh, actually allow me to make a movie, if you'll be able to see it. But it's super, super easy. Now, do not, do not, do not have your students use Devolver. Devolver is something for you to use, not for your students to use. And you may be sitting there like, why? I can't really show you because I don't know if, if, if it's going to allow me to actually, if you'll be able to see it. But um, there are some racy characters on Devolver. So I'm going to go through, again, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But if you, if you are seeing this, you see this little racy lady. Again, I don't know if, you, if you're seeing it. But... There's some racy characters on Devolver, so you don't want to be the person that, you know, told your students to come use this, and they make some kind of inappropriate Devolver. So, but it is a great quick tool to use. I've seen one where a cactus was talking to a cowboy, and he was introducing biomes. And it was, you know, it was a really quick introduction to what the lesson was going to be that day, and I thought that was really cool. But so Devolver, and what you do is at the end, when you make your Devolver, you can email it to yourself, and then you, you use the link to, um, to show your Devolver. So really quick tool for teachers to use. I just very much warn you against um, having your students use Devolver because they have some racy characters. Even on the front screen, you see the little pile right here with the little flies around it. You know, it's like... Why, why is that there? Um, and why do they have, you know, sexy characters on Devolver? I have no clue. But they're there, so I like to warn you against having your students use it, or at least you telling your students to use it. Telegami is another um, video creator that uses avatars. You see the little avatar lady and the little guy up here. Um, but the cool thing about Telegami is that you can actually put a real picture behind the video. So you see this picture is actually a real picture behind the tele, uh, behind the GAMI is what they call them. Um, so how I've seen this used, I've seen librarians use it where they would take a picture of the bookshelf with a book face front, and they'll have the little telegami actually doing a book review. I've seen it used in uh, classrooms where the teacher will take a picture of like the reading center and they'll have the telegami at, or the gami actually reading the book in the reading center. And the students are like, where is she? Because, you know, they recognize their classroom. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool tool that you can use for various reasons. And you can have your students, of course, create their own telegami and tell you about whatever content you're just teaching. Have them create instructional videos. You know how um, I am... I am a very big um, believer in when you teach something, you have to know it. You, you learn it much more while you're teaching it. So have them actually doing instructional video to teach you the content that you just taught to them. You'll see if they actually understand it. And it'll be something different besides, you know, a report or, you know, something like that. So have them do little videos, instructional videos. And a moto and we video. We're kind of the, the same, two sides of the same coin. 
um, they're both video creators where you, you're actually creating um, real videos or slideshows that become videos. Um, so with Animoto, students really like or teachers really like students to use. And students really like Animoto because it helps you out. So what I mean by that is if you upload your videos or you upload your pictures, it helps you create that slideshow. It helps you create that video. Where if you use something like Windows Movie Maker, you are controlling every single thing. You have to say exactly when the music comes in and goes out and that kind of stuff. Where Animoto helps you through that process. So if you are just getting your students involved with video making. And when I say video making, it doesn't have to be, we're not talking green screen, you know, you don't have to get that advanced with it. It could be go find some some pictures that represent uh, the, you know, rehabilitation era and tell me a story with the videos. And they can put it together. So it doesn't have to be, you know, them on camera or anything like that. You can think of just really, really awesome ways that you can use this in the classroom. So Animoto helps them create it a little bit more than, like I said, a Windows Movie Maker. And we video um, does the exact same thing, but it doesn't give you as much help as Animoto, but it, get, it lets you be a little bit more in control. So we video and Animoto does pretty much the exact same thing. And for we video and Animoto, you have to have an account. Ed Puzzle. If you know Ed Puzzle, you love Ed Puzzle. What Ed Puzzle does is it allows you to either upload videos or use their extensive video library. They have videos from Khan Academy, YouTube, watch this all over the place. Um, and what it does is it allows you to create a quiz using the video, on the video. So if we're looking at this, you actually can, and I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see, but it actually lets you crop the video to wherever you actually want it to be, and it lets you stop the video at whatever time you want to stop it and put in questions. So you would, of course, have to create an account. And your students, either you create an account for your students or your students create an account. And it's almost like a little um, grade book. So you have your little grade book with all your students in it. And the cool thing about it is they go on, they actually, let me just type something in. They actually um, take, the, take the quiz online or on their phone or you know, wherever they use technology. And it grades it for you. So you can see the little grade book right here. It tells you if they turned it in on time, if they were late. Um, they tell you, you know, what score they got. And they also, you see this little second picture. It tells you how many times they've watched each segment. It tells you how long they stayed on it. So, you know, if they were like, well, I didn't understand that question, you can go on and say, well, it's because you didn't watch that part of the video. You just skip to the question. So, you know, tell you that kind of stuff is really good with um, keeping up with those kind of uh, statistics. So, Ed Puzzle is really, really good. You can see a lot of examples. If you just go to YouTube, I have one um, pulled up. But if you just go to YouTube, and just type in a puzzle example. You can see examples of teachers who have done it and kind of what kind of questions they put into it and things like that. So like I said, if you know a puzzle, you love a puzzle. It definitely is one of those tools that you can start using today. Let me see if I have any questions before I move on to the last part of this. Yes, I captured some more. Um, Okay. Is Devolver only used to make online videos, or can you download them yes. only online? Okay. Can yes. they be embedded in blogs or websites? The only way, I, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, the only way you can embed it is by embedding the link. Okay. Yes. Um, can you it's use not like an embed code. Right. Can you use these tools with Chromebooks? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you wanted to combine Teledami video with green screen, could you do that? Hmm. I know you can upload a picture. I don't know if you can upload 
like a video behind it. So what you would have to do is you would do the green screen. You would like take a picture of whatever you're trying to green screen in. Mm -hmm. Then you would go to whatever editing tool you use, put whatever background picture you wanted, and then you would upload that. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, is anything free on Animoto now? Animoto is free. Did anybody oh. see something? That oh, yeah. We saw some chat saying there it was a, it was a paid part to it. Animoto. Oh, there is a paid part. Yes, most okay, of these have paid parts to it. Okay. Okay. Those are the questions that I captured after our last question break. So okay. I will allow you to continue. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so the next couple of ones are just places to find videos. Like, you know, I don't want to create right now. I just want to find some good videos, some quality videos to use. So one is Watch No Learn. So this is a place that actually kind of goes out and finds videos from all over. So it'll go to YouTube and do the searching for you. They have people that upload to Watch No. Um, but what you do is you come here and you click a subject. Like we well, can search, but I usually just click a subject. Now sometimes when you click a subject, there won't be any videos, and you're like, "What happened? I don't know what's going on." You have to click a subcategory. So once you click a subcategory, then you see the videos come up. You click another subcategory. All right, so then you'll see the videos come up, and it'll tell you where the video's from. It goes and it finds videos from different places, and it makes you a nice little, this is from Discovery Education, 60-second wrap from five minutes from YouTube, and it creates a nice little playlist for you. So you can kind of look at what you want and choose a video from there. Most people know about Khan Academy. So Khan Academy, um, you do have to sign up, but Khan Academy has videos on poof, a bunch of different topics. And you, uh, oh, I didn't go there. SAT test prep, awesome. Uh, but a bunch of different topics, and you can go on and find videos. Now, a lot of educators like Khan Academy versus some of the I don't want to say cutesier stuff, um, but Khan, Khan Academy kind of just gets straight to the nitty gritty. It's, is you know just a picture of like a blackboard sometimes, <laughs> and they're just showing you, hey, you want to know how to do this specific problem? This is how you do it. Like it kind of gets rid of the thrills and frills and just says, hey, this is the content. This is what you're looking for, and um and they've been very very successful. Sorry about that. I keep going too <laughs> far to stop. They've they've been very successful with that format. SchoolTube and TeacherTube are kind of your amateur videos. Um, SchoolTube is a place where students and teachers and schools can come and upload videos. So you'll see a lot of amateur videos um, about whatever, <laughs> whatever is happening in their school. You see some newscasts, and um, I know a lot of teachers like to come out, come and scope out SchoolTube to get ideas about stuff. You know, they're like, oh, what's, what's other schools doing about this topic? And they'll see, you know, different videos. So that's SchoolTube. And then TeacherTube is pretty much the exact same thing, but it's for teachers. And what a lot of people don't know are if you saw TeacherTube some years ago and you haven't come back, there's so much that you can share on TeacherTube besides videos. So TeacherTube is almost like a little teacher community. The one thing I don't like about it is it is just racked with advertisements. Like you have to try to find the content beyond the advertisement. So I really don't like that. There we go, another advertisement. Um, so yeah, it's kind of racked with advertisements, <laughs> but um, you can find, you know, people come here and put documents on here, photos, playlists. So if you're looking for a certain playlist um, for, you know, whatever, you can come here and try to find it just like you can go to like a live binder and things like that. So that's TeacherTube and SchoolTube. And the last thing I want to show you at the time I have left, I think I have to finish by 11.50 if I'm not mistaken, is screencasting and creating a YouTube channel. So this is a completely separate presentation that I do, but I like to kind of link it with grandmother's videos because we're talking about videos. So if you look at the screencasting part, 
first of all, what is screencasting? Screencasting is when you want to teach something to someone else using your actual screen. So whether that be online, whether that be your desktop, um, you know, back in the day, we were all amazed by, you know, the IT people, and they would make a quick video about, hey, click here and click here, and you're like, that's amazing. How did you do that? Now everybody can do it. Um, so you, and what that, what, what that is called is screen casting. You're casting your screen. So there's several different ways to do that. I like to show, um, I call it the top three in my humble opinion. Um, and that's Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, and Jing. Now, I will give you a little, um, you know, when, when screencasting was, you know, first popular, Jing was the master because Jing was kind of the only one out. Um, but nowadays, I would recommend either Screencastify or Screencast-O-Matic over Jing, even though I do love my TechSmith products. I would suggest one of those, just because Jing, you only have five minutes, um, well, mainly five minutes, and the quality is not as good as Screencast-O-Matic or uh, Screencastify. So um, I would kind of suggest those two over Jing. With Screencastify and Screencast Screencast-O-Matic, you get more time. With Screencastify, it is a Google product, so you do need to use Google Chrome with it. And what it is, it's, it's, a, um, it's an, it's an add-on. So you would just download the, um, download it. It comes right here. You can see where my, my mouse is. And you can just click it anytime and get your, um, no, apparently I haven't set that one up. You can just click it at any time. You set it up. You just tell them where you want your videos to be located, either on the Google Drive or on your desktop. And then you have a nice little box that comes out right here, and you have different options you can choose. You can either have your face and, like, do a... Um, I want to say FaceTime, if you're not what it is. Um, you can either have your face on the screen, you can do the screen itself without your face, or you can do a combo where you can have, you know, you could be showing your screen and your face will be right there in the corner. So, that, again, you cannot do that with Jean. Jean, you can only do screen. So, that's why I would suggest these over that. Now, there are some paid features to it, of course, like everything, but you can do a whole bunch for free. So, with Screencast-O-Matic, is actually a download. So you would download Screencast-O-Matic to, your, um, to your, your desktop, and then you can record, and it has the exact same stuff. You can record the screen, you can do the webcam, or you can do both, and then you can come here and see that uh, Screencast-O-Matic is up to 15 minutes and that kind of stuff. And then if you want to pay for it, you won't have the little watermark in the bottom right-hand corner and things like that. But I think it's $15 a year. So Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify are the two that I would suggest. Jing is also a download. You have to download it, and then you'll have it on your computer. I always say that screencasting is, you know, I hate to compare it to drugs, but it's almost like drugs. These give you a little taste, and once you start with screencasting, you just want more and more. And that's when you go to the paid resources. These are the two that I have used and suggest. They're both by TechSmith. Snagit is the, the kind of paid version of Jing. And then once you really get into it, you go to the granddaddy of them all, and that's Camtasia. And that's where I am. I have to have Camtasia. But um, Camtasia's not cheap. It's, if I'm not mistaken, $1.99. Um, so this is when you get really, really into screencasting. And when you actually want to edit the video, you will come to a Camtasia. So that's just a little bit about screencasting, and you can find this. You saw it was right there at the bottom of Not Your Grandmother's Videos. You can also come here to Presentations Tech Tools and um, get the, I'm sorry, not Tech Tools, right here, Screencasting and Creating a YouTube Channel. So you can get that, um, that information as well. So I'm going to release the screen because I think I've, taking up too much time, so I'm going to release the screen and get any questions and um, go from there.
Thanks so much, Desiree. I did capture a few more questions. Awesome. Any thoughts on the differences between Clay Posit, formerly EduCanon, and EdPuzzle? I've never used EduCanon. Okay. So I can't. I don't want to lie to you. So okay. I don't Thank you. Use EdPuzzle. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you use the SchoolTube and TeachTube videos in Viewer? Hmm. That is a good question. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and just answer that right quick. And then try it. Okay. Um, I think, uh, which one is it? I think um, we tried, okay, let me get back to it. We've tried one of those with the downloading and it worked. I think we tried school. Mm -hmm. I think we tried teacher two with the downloader one and it worked. But let me see if the mm -hmm. view pure one works. So let me get a link. I'm going to turn it off before the video messes stuff up. Okay, and then I'm going to go to View Pure. Okay, I'm going to click Purify and let's see if it purifies it. I think it has to be, no. So for View Pure, it has to be YouTube.com. Okay, only YouTube, but there may be some other uh, similar tool that possibly could be used, like yes. Share TV. Yes, yes. yes. For ViewPeer, it's only YouTube.com, and then for Keep, right. I think you can. Okay. For some of it. Nope. Okay, you can't do that one. You have to we can't do it with Keep it either. Uh, okay. School Two did not work with this one. Okay. Will Snagit record videos? Yes, that's what that's what the whole thing is. It's, it's recording. Well, not. Not necessarily recording your screen, but I think the question was recording a video playing on the screen. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Even if even if you're using the free ones like uh, mm -hmm. Screencast-O-Matic and all that, if you play mm -hmm. a video, it's going to record anything that's on your screen. So okay. if you're recording a video on your screen, it's recording the sound and the video. Great. Uh, Eileen, if you wouldn't mind clarifying your question, I'm phone to make a video on your computer. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. I'm not sure if Desiree will, would know either. Any other questions for Desiree? Yes, I, uh, I just see somebody saying interesting idea. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've done that, especially with some of them. Um, you can actually have little little tools where you can like circle stuff and point to stuff mm -hmm. on a video. You can stop it and, you know, circle stuff. So yeah, there's so much you can do with those screencasting right. tools. Right. Transfer from phone to make a video. Do you, um, so Eileen, when you say transfer from phone to make a video, what are you transferring? Either pictures or a video that you did on your phone? Oh, video okay, made well, on the you, phone. You, you, so if you do a video on your phone and then you transfer it to your computer, what are you trying to do with it beyond that? I have not used the recap app. And I'm putting my email address, how do I transfer it to my phone? Eileen, you may have to send me an email and I can help you to just clarify exactly because I thought you were transferring it from your phone, but you want to put it on your phone. So I, I just need to kind of clarify with you and I don't want to take up this time. But um, email me. I just put my email and I can absolutely get with you. And there was a question about transferring videos to take I'm not sure to take where, so that's why I didn't copy that one out. Okay. Trans I, I Somebody asked that. about transferring videos. Um, to what or to where? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Because they didn't finish it to okay. the computer. What do you mean transferring videos to the computer? 
Um, to so continue editing. Edit it. It depends on what tool you're using. So if you're using, if yeah. you're talking about screencasting, I'm guessing, um, if you're talking about screencasting, Snagit and Camtasia, then you actually edit the video, some of the free ones do not. So mm -hmm. you, just, you do the video and you're done with the video. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, think if, I think it was Screencast-O-Matic will let you crop the video, but that's about it. So mm -hmm. that's what I said. Once you start getting into editing, then you will start getting into a paid product. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the questions that I found. Um, oh, I agree, KG. Gene has the SWF format, yeah. and it flashes going away. So, yeah. Right. Right. Some of them do have other ways to allow you not to edit. What's the easiest screencasting tool for elementary students? Paula, it depends on if you're using, if, in my opinion, if you're using Chrome, I would just stick to uh, Screencastify. Mm -hmm. Since it is, it's very easy. If they're if they're using Chromebooks or you're using Chrome, that's that's what I would say. If you're using Chromebooks, that's the one you have to stick to. But if you're using right. um, just a regular desktop, I would still stick with that for my students. Terrific. Thanks I have so much. Been. Okay, Tammy. Yeah. Um. um I know some school districts have got the Creative Cloud. So if your school district does have it, there's a relatively new software that they've put out. And it's called Character Animator. And the kids can take a character that, that's provided for them if they want, because they, they package it with several examples. Or the kids can even design their own. But what's so neat about that one is that they can be on the webcam, and they can talk. And it puppets their character. So uh, if they raise their eyebrows, if the character's been set up so that it's keyed in on the eyebrows, the character will lift its eyebrows. And the mouth even moves. So, and it interprets what you're saying live time. So live time, you're speaking, it's turning the speaking into the proper mouth shapes that are made for the character. So it is really fun. I've been playing around with it some, and it's a blast. Kids will love it. Um, it's be part of the, if your school has the Creative Cloud, it's free within that, so if they've already got it, it won't cost you anything extra. Um, and it's called Character Animator. It's part of the Creative Cloud. And if you're just curious just to learn more about it, Character Animator, let's see if I can multitask. Animator. Um, if you're curious about it, go to YouTube. They've got a, a channel where they've got a lot of videos that shows how to do it. Especially if you've got older kids, they would probably love the challenge of making their own characters and rigging them up. Um, and it's not terribly hard, so middle school and up might be able to do it, but the elementary students can certainly use the ones that are already pre-rigged. And you can record them. And they just added the feature just in the last couple of weeks so that you can broadcast with them. So you could do broadcast. So then the students can, you know, there's a lot of different ways they could do it live time. Uh, I, think, I think I remember them mentioning like Google Chat or something, some sort of they just come up with a video, if you, you can catch that one too, about the broadcast they want to do a live broadcast. But I can think of, a, of kids loving that, where the, the characters can talk as they're talking. And as they move their heads, the character is moving its head and eyebrows. And it's mimicking their mouth there. It doesn't really mimic their mouth movements as far as the mouth goes. It's actually interpreting the sound file. But things like the jaw dropping, if it's, if it's set up in the character egg. So it's, it, it's a blast. It is so much fun. Thanks for sharing that, Tammy. Um, those are the questions that I was able to capture. I haven't seen any others since, so I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Desiree has her uh, contact information on this slide, both her website and her email address. And thanks so much for, for presenting to us today, Desiree. We've captured the questions already, so I'm going to turn this over to Peggy, who's going to tell us what's coming up. 
Thank you so much, Desiree. That was fantastic. Um, I'm anxious to go back and watch it again to get all the tips and slow motion. <laughs> we hope you'll all come back um, any Saturday you can to join us in our upcoming shows. Next week we're going to be hearing about a new program called Choose to be Nice. And Dina Krieger is going to share that with us. The following week, we have a super show with Paula Nagel, Billy Krakauer, and Jerry Blumengarten, who most of you probably know as Cyberry Man. And they're going to share some fantastic ideas and resources for connecting your students globally. On May 20th, we have a great children's author coming to share with us. Diane de la Las Casas is going to be sharing some of the literacy lessons that she does as an artist in residence. We won't have a show on Memorial Day weekend um, since most people are away with their families. But on June 3rd, we have Mark Moran coming back with us. And he has revived the sweet search engine for students, which is totally awesome. So he's going to be sharing the updates on that on Finding Dulcinea and also Choose to Matter. So I hope you'll all come back and join us. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Harkadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as the session is public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher for the month at this site. There's also a tab in the Live Finder to do so. You can also nominate yourself to be Featured Teacher of the Month. The video collection for uh, the archives are on the iTunes U. And when you exit the session, the survey link should open in your browser. You can also take the survey from the chat box or the chat log or from within the Live Finder itself. And at the bottom of that survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And, and thanks to Patty Ruffing, uh, she sends them out, and also they print. Your name gets printed on their certificates now. Please, though, make sure this goes to a personal email address and not your school address, because schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guest for today, Desiree Alexander, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution. And to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thanks so much for coming. <laughs>